If you're younger, it probably seems strange to you why I'm talking about a station that's now 50 years old. And, you know, hey, okay, big deal, old man. You went to this radio station and, uh, you know, and now you're living your old memories. <laughs> that is not it at all. Matter of fact, I actually hate going back and reliving stuff. I like to look forward, which is probably why I'm 73 years old doing videos. I mean, really, I and mean, that's your normal old guy thing. But the reason I'm doing it is because no station on earth, I don't think, did the basics better, which is what I'm trying to teach you than the station that I'm teaching you about CKLW in, uh, in Detroit. And let me just show you something to kind of set your mind at ease, if you will. A couple of years ago, I think it was 2017, might have been 2018, Radio Inc., which is a trade publication, a radio trade publication, and it's a great magazine, you know, online, and you actually should subscribe to it. It's free. Why not? They asked two icons of radio, Lee Abrams and Randy Michaels, and then ultimately their readers. But they started out with Randy and with Lee and said, what are your 20 best all-time radio stations ever? And they went to Lee, and if you don't know who Lee Abrams is, Lee Abrams founded XM Satellite Radio. He did all of the channels in the beginning. He was their senior programmer. But before that, Lee was the master of rock radio, AOR, album-oriented radio. He probably put on, launched more rock stations on this planet than anyone alive, ever. And he was noted for that, and he was really good at it. So, you know, and Lee has done a ton of different things. So Lee gave his 20 radio stations and the criteria for it and a little bit about each station, why he chose them. Same thing with Randy Michaels. Randy did the same thing. If you don't know who Randy Michaels is, Randy Michaels is a consummate programmer in the beginning of his career. Then he became the president and CEO of JCOR, which was a small chain in the Cincinnati area. That got bought by Clear Channel, and then Randy became the CEO of Clear Channel in the beginning when there was only a few radio stations. And he's the guy that grew it out to, to this 10,000-pound gorilla in the, in the media spectrum. I think they were up to 12 or 1,300 radio stations. They had Live Nation. They had television stations. They had a bazillion billboards all over the world. That was Randy. And probably since Bill Drake, I don't think anybody has fundamentally changed the way radio operates more than Randy did, although he did it mostly in the operational way, um, which you know we'll go into it in, in a later lesson because it's really interesting. And, and I like these two guys because neither one of them think the same and the usual. They all can think out of the box when they need to. I love that about people. You know, if you don't think the norm, I'm right with you. Because so many times doing the norm doesn't get you anywhere. You have to think out of the box and you, you have to do different things. Anyway, I digress. Radio Wink asked them for their opinions, and for, for Lee, I mean, you know, you're seeing on the screen right now, I'm just showing you the article, and there'll be a link below that you can read the whole article, because I'm going to whip through this for time. But long story short, Lee chose as the number one station, top 40 ever, KHJ in Los Angeles. And what did I say it was? Drake Station, all right? Randy picked KISS FM in LA, wonderful radio station, and he picked it for different reasons. But if you look here, his number three radio station is CKLW. I want to read you a quote from what Randy wrote, which is why I'm doing this first lesson and most of the early lessons on CKLW, because it's the basics. This is Randy's quote. No one ever, anywhere, did the basics better than the Big Eight. That was the other moniker for the station. CKLW, the Big Eight, because it was 800 on the dial. So nobody ever did the basics better than this radio station, and luckily, I was there. So I saw it, I had a part in it, and I know everything that went on, and I'm going to download that into your skull <laughs> with these lessons. So, uh, you know, I don't know, I don't know what else I could teach you that would be better. I just don't, even though this thing is 50 years old. Here's the amazing part about this, too. So Lee gave his opinion. Randy gave his opinion, okay? You know, and CK is, you know, high on both of their lists. But when they turned it over to their readers, Radio Inc. readers, which are radio people, 
the radio owners, their managers, the programmers, their jocks. There are people who are in the business now. The radio from all over, there are no non-radio people hardly at all looking at, this, at these magazines. The number one station that the regular people picked 50 years after the fact is CKOW. That's how much of a wild radio station that was. That's how much impact it had. And that's how much or how far the basics can get you as a base, because there was a lot more going on than basics. I think if you want to learn anything, you need the basics. So here we go. Okay, let's get into this. Uh, this is uh, what I encountered when I first got to CKLW, and uh, this was given to me verbally, no pictures, which made it way harder to pick up. Eventually, after I was taking notes and this was going, you know, going along, as, as a person named Frank Brody actually was teaching me this, the format, I took the notes and then made it into a more straight ahead sheet and it just made it simpler for me to pick up. And it's very close to the way the computers operate now. But, you know, again, this was probably 15 years before personal computers were even invented. So it was more of a linear way of doing it. And, but it's hard to do a hot clock, harder actually to do a hot clock um, when you're not looking at the visual because it's hard to tell exactly how to balance quarter hours to quarter hours. So let's take a look at this and we'll start at the top, right at the top at the time. And this is, this would have been afternoon drive and it also would have been nights and also uh, mornings other than the news hours, which I'll show you in a second. Basically the clock changes a tiny little bit um, when the news is uh, is kicked in. Okay, so at the top of the hour, we had a station ID. Same ID would run at the bottom of the hour, at 30. So OO and at 30, same station ID, which, you know, gave the call letters and the city of license, which all of the Drake stations did. They ran pretty much the same logo, and it was Bill Drake himself that was actually doing it. And the hits just keep on coming. CKLW. The and then you would play a song out of that. Next came a liner, a liner over the intro of the second song in the hour. And if you look around this clock, you're going to notice that there's four liner positions. But there's two types of liners. There were promotional liners, which were for contests and concerts and that sort of thing. And you'll notice one at 03, in other words, right in front of that second song. And then at 33, down at the bottom of that clock. And then if you look around 20, you know, after that green tab, the song after that, and then the next song, you'll see another type of liner. That will be station imaging liner. And that might be talking about the morning show. It might be talking about, hey, we play a lot of music. We, we do 20 in a row. You know, whatever it happened to be. Anything you want to talk about. Everything except a contest. That same thing occurs around 48, 49. You'll see it on the opposite side of the clock. And if you look, you'll see one, two, three, four right in the middle. That would be the quarters. Quarter one, two, three, four. So you try to sort of balance one and three and try to balance two and four. And they're pretty close, except that as we keep going, the next, the first black thing that you see, that's a stop set. So if you look over the entire clock and count them up, you're going to see six black stop sets. That's where the commercials were. It just so happened to be that it, in this time, in this day and age, you would never see this now, there were six commercial breaks. But they were only a minute and 10 seconds long. Usually they would be a 60 with a 10 second live spot after it. Sometimes they would be two 30s and a 10 second live spot. Something, sometimes there would be actually a recorded 10. But all of them were 60s and 10s. So when you add that up, six 60s are six minutes, and then six 10s are one more minute. This was a seven minute clock. That's how many commercials were there. That was the commercial load. That's a term, commercial load, seven minutes in this hour. Seven minutes in all the hours, actually. Coming out of that first black stop set, you can see a little blue line and it says logo. Well, that would be an up or a down logo. And the logos, we had different types of jingles, which I'll explain later on, but they were basically acapella jingles and they were jingles with music on them. 
upbeat or downbeat, either one, you know, the tempo was different, but they were still really full. And when they hit, you heard them. KFRC. KFRC. That was, in our terms, at the station, called a logo. The rest were just called jingles, <laughs> you know. And uh, they tended to be more music-type jingles. I'll go into that later. I don't want to get too bogged down in this clock because it's easy to get um, distracted with the elements, but but you miss why they're there. And I really want to spend time on why they're there and, and what you would do with them, okay? Because you can do this a million different ways, and I'll show you four or five, like boom, 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 in just a second, and you'll get the idea that yeah, nothing's cast in stone here. So after that first break, and then a logo out, of which we never really talked after the logos, very rare, after that first break comes two songs, the two orange things, and then we're at another commercial break. Same thing, minute and ten for the break. Then the green was a weather. We did weather at 15 and 45. A very specialized way of doing the weather, and I'll go into that later. Let's keep moving down. Out of the weather, you play a song, and then there's the liner, station image, then another song, and then we're at another break. And this break, again, a minute, 10 seconds worth of commercials, but then after this break, there was a recorded promo, usually about 45 seconds, typically. Sometimes they went a minute, but usually they were around 40, 45 seconds. And there were really no set times for the recorded promos. The promos would be written, they you know, would be tried to be written not too long, not too short, get across what you're trying to say, send it over to production, and he would work his magic on it, and it would turn into a promo. And whatever the time was for that, that's what it was. Nobody tried for 30, nobody tried for 60. They tried for excellence. How good can we make this promo? I don't care what the length is. Making it as best as humanly possible, that was the goal. And out of each of these recorded promos, you would play a logo, the appropriate one, going into the next song, whether it's up or down, depending on whether the next song was fast or slow. Again, another song. Now we're down at the 30. The station ID plays again into another song. Then it basically repeats what we did in the first hour, pretty much. There's the song, then comes a promotional liner, then another song, then a stop set, then a logo, song, song, stop set, weather, song, station imaging liner, song, stop set, logo, song, song, back at the top of the hour. And that's the way it would go pretty much all day long, all night long, other than a few hours where things would change. So we've seen the main clock. Now this is the news clock. And uh, the news is the part that's like that reddish color. And again, if you look at that, and we'll I'll bounce back and forth between the main clock and this clock, just ignore that the orange and blue. I, I wanted to start using blue um, in this to, to back down the color so, so other things pop out and it's easier on your eyes to pick things out because that orange was pretty bright. Um, anyway, so I'll give you some examples of other kind of clocks using this blue. But the stop sets for the first half hour are exactly the same. They're pretty much identical for the third quarter hour, except that at 40, in this particular instance, 40 in the morning, 6, 7, and 8 o'clock, and also 4, 5, and 6 o'clock in the afternoon, there was news. So we went in at 40. It was the 2020 news, 20 minutes before the hour. And there were 10-minute newscasts. So what they would do would be to start the news. They would do four minutes of news, make a break for a one-minute commercial. Then it would come back and do another four minutes of news and, and sports and things. And then another one-minute spot, which is pretty much the spot that was at around 50, but now it just got moved up earlier. And they would do the weather, and then it would be goodbye back into the music. So that whole section would be 10 minutes, and they would suck the two spots into it. I'm going to stay on CKLW's clock as we explain this because they did the basics so well. Everything had a reason for being there. Everything was well thought out and it was really locked down. Even though there was really, as a jock on the air, we had a huge amount of free reign to entertain and do whatever we want within the confines of doing what was set up by the PD, which is going to be your job if you become a PD. And I hope you do because it's a fun gig. So let me just go through some clocks for you. All four of these other examples, they all have nine minutes, which is kind of around the norm now for a lot of stations. I tend to kind of like eight, eight minute clocks, but you know, you got to make money and stay in business. So the minute count of each hour keeps going up year after year because it's harder to stay in business. 
A lot of clocks will be 10 minutes. But anyway, I just did four examples in, in, for no particular reason, and they're all nine-minute clocks. So let's look at the first one. There's four breaks here, but they're not equal breaks. They're sort of balanced, but they're not equal breaks. A one-and-a-half-minute break in the first one, three minutes the next one, one-and-a-half, and three. It's just a way of doing it. It's not the correct way of doing it. It's not the wrong way of doing it. It's just a way of doing it. So moving on to the next one, now instead of four breaks, there's three, and everything becomes even. It doesn't have to be even, but in this instance, it is even. Three, three, three. Going to a two-break clock, it would look like this. It may actually be balanced totally different way, but to make nine minutes, four and a half and four and a half, again, you could do five and four. You could do six and three. It's up to you how you want to do it, and you would do that depending on how your competition is doing their commercials. Let's say in this particular clock where you're doing two, four and a half, and four and a half, you might want to do it there because your main competitor is also doing two breaks, except their two breaks are maybe one song or two songs behind your break. So they may be doing it sort of into the top of the hour and, you know, and into the bottom of the hour. That may be where they're doing their commercials. Well, the thought process for you might be, I'll do my breaks ahead of my competitor because we'll do our commercials, get them out of the way. If anybody was listening to our station, heard the commercials and said, ooh, I'm going to bail out for a while and go to the competitor, they're going to start going into their commercials and the audience would come back to you and you're going to hold them for two, four, five, six songs. And then the process starts all over again. So that would be the logic of that. And finally, this would be a one-stop set clock, one full nine-minute shot. You don't see this too often. It was kind of prevalent uh, a while back, but I, I think most stations don't do this now unless they're doing something really special. I don't even know what that would be. I mean, this, to me, would be a really dangerous clock as far as staying in business. Great if you're a programmer, really, because, uh, you know, you have essentially 51 minutes of entertainment and then only nine straight minutes of... Uh, of commercials. Also, if you look at this clock, I actually had a guy once, uh, a professor of math, uh, when I was in Montreal, I actually went to him and had him figure out, and it was really interesting. You know, I showed him a clock just like this, and I said, if this was a roulette wheel, in each of these slots where these songs are, are where the ball could drop, how would you lay out these to make it so the minimum amount of time would land on black? And he worked it out, and it was really interesting answers, which I'm not going to tell you. <laughs> I'm sorry. If this was a roulette wheel, the odds are pretty low that a majority of your audience is going to hit that black spot. Just a different way of looking at a hot clock. I don't think I've ever mentioned that to anybody before other than that professor at McGill. Anyway, something to think about. And there you go. Those are what the clocks look like. Hot clocks on a radio station. We're going to go into next music on the next lesson because I'm sure that now that you got a little bit of a handle on the clocks, you're probably wondering, okay, what about all those pieces? How do you use those pieces? How do you work with them? You know, what's the thinking? We're going to take them one by one. I guess I can't think of any other way to do it because this is an awful lot to throw at you all at one time and try to make the pieces fit. It's easier to just go, here's the overview, which would be the clocks. Now you get an idea of sort of what's going on. Now let's delve into them one by one. And that's what we'll do next. And I'm sure you're wondering about the music, and we'll do that coming up on the next lesson. I'll delve into the current music, I'll delve into the gold music, and, uh, you know, how they were played, how they were chosen, what were the rules, you know, what did the jocks have to do in order to implement, what the PD wanted, all of that sort of stuff is coming up on the next lesson. All right, so, what am I missing here? No, no, wait. <laughs> One from the vaults now on CKLW from the Norman Whitfield vaults. We're gonna go back, back, back in time with an old Motown classic entitled Papa Was a Rolling Stone on CKLW. We all got their own radio. Oh, hi, we're back. Thank you very much. <laughs> Well, that's kind of cute. I appreciate that. Make sure you subscribe. You're able to get the next lesson and uh, find the channel and all that usual stuff. It's just down here somewhere. All right. Hope you're enjoying these. Hope you're getting something out of it. I'm having fun doing it. So, you know, it's half the battle right there. All right. So till the next lesson. See ya.